Hey everyone, Kathy Zilski here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Do you ever find it challenging to incorporate pattern paper onto your card projects? Today I've got a couple different paper pads and some very simple approaches to getting over that fear. No, seriously, not that hard. Don't be afraid. Stick around, those card projects are coming up next. I like to keep it really simple when using pattern papers for my card projects. I'm going to share these cards today and this just uses one pattern. So starting small with a single pattern or moving on to a coordinated collection that has multicolor, it's a great way to start off and find success with pattern paper. So let's take a look at the products I'm using today. I've got two really cute pads from My Favorite Things, and I've got two dies that I designed for Simon Says Stamp. These are a real chunky outline style with a shadow layer, and these were inspired by the chunky cut files that I see in scrapbooking, but I wanted to create some that were card sized. And this style of die cut is perfect for working with your pattern paper. I've got some pre-printed sentiments and an embossing folder that I will be using for cards today. And for my cardstock, I've got a little bit of Nina Solar White Classic Crest. I've got some Dusty Rose and Craft cardstock. And we'll be using a few other things as we go, so let's get into it. First thing I'm going to do is cut out my first shadow layer and my first outline layer of the Love You Die. I'll run that back and forth a few times, and this is the 110 pound Nina Solar White. I really like my die cuts to be sturdy for my cards. And I'll pop that out, and here's a little pro tip. Sometimes I just take my die and just throw it onto my platform. <laughs> Sometimes the things pop right out, and that's pretty exciting. Sometimes the die goes flying, and then I've lost it for a few hours. But there's the results, and I'm going to cut out two more of the outline Love You for my project. Now when I'm picking a single pattern, I look for the smaller patterns, right? I like six by six pads for this reason, because they tend to be a smaller pattern. Because I want to have a little bit of this pattern show up in every single area of the die cut. So I'm just gonna cut the Love You out, and I'm going to save all of the fills of this pattern to fill in the cut file. But I'm also gonna save the outline because this is going to make a card as well. So you get something from the positive and you get something from the negative. I've got this spray glue and I like it because it doesn't have any odor and you can spray it without worrying about your lungs getting <laughs> exceptionally damaged. So I've been trying to use this more and more. Just gonna spritz it on into my little spray box to add a nice quick thin layer. Pick that up and I'm going to glue this down onto the shadow layer. This is layer one and we've just got the white on white for right now. I'm gonna get that adhered really well. Sometimes I just bring in my bone folder and just go back and forth over it to make sure it's really pressed down. Next, I'll take liquid adhesive and just dot it inside the areas where I am going to fill in with the pattern paper. Of course, on the O's, I don't wanna add any adhesive to the center because those are going to remain open. And then I'll just take my little pickup stick here and pick up each letter and pop it in. And so you can see it start to take shape and you can start to read the love you. And I just think it's so cool how the pattern continues and you can see that progression. And I'm gonna press this down again, really, really burnish it down so that the pattern paper stays put. And then I'll add two more layers of the love you onto this layer to build up the dimension for this effect and I also added in the centers of the O's. I just love that chunky look, it's so fun. Next, I'll cut out my sentiments for the cards and I'm using my sentiment label dies and the pre-printed sentiments. And all I do is line them up, tape them down and run them through my die cut machine. The nice thing is, is you can use these label dies to cut out perfect strips and all the other strips will be fine and you can save those for future cards. So once I've cut them out, then I trim off the ends. And I like to just line up the little letter most to the right on my guillotine trimmer, flip it, and repeat. It's one of my favorite little trimmer hacks, so helps me to cut nicely centered sentiments. Now these are printed on white cardstock, so they have a white core. And what I like to do is just take a dark marker, this is a Copic T10, just go over the edges, 
so that it appears to be a black core cardstock. It's an optional step, but it's very easy to do. Now to prep my card base. This is going to be a little square card, so it's going to be four and a quarter square. I'm scoring at four and a quarter, and the cardstock size is eight and a half by four and a quarter. I like to tape my card bases closed just so they stay flat while I am adhering my elements. I've got some foam squares on the back of the die cut panel. I'm going to pop that right into the center of the card. Get it lined up with my T-square and press. Then I'm going to pop up the U the best right in the center. I've got that on some thin foam squares. Just get it lined up till it looks right. And I'm going to put a brick on that just so that it adheres and stays in place. And that is the finished card project. So I love doing little square cards and I am going to share how to create an envelope that is coming later in the video. So stick around, but let's make a second card with the outline. This is so easy. You take your little outline and what I'm going to do is start by building my layers directly onto this little square card base. I've got all the pieces. I just have to glue them in order to build up dimension. And once the first layer of outline is down, I'm going to fill in with white. See that? I've got my liquid adhesive going. And again, doing it right onto the card base is so easy. Once you get everything down, just burnish and begin the remaining layers. So I'll glue the two outline love yous and then top it with the patterned one. And what that does, it just creates this really cool uh, outline, stripey love you. And I just think that has a great look and it's a really fun use for the leftover paper. Ah, oh, love it. I added the little stripey guys right into the center of the O's as well. And to finish this off, just popping on a little kiss kiss. So simple, but that is pattern paper for the win. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to overthink it. I really love how this turned out. So easy to do. But now you got this cute square card. Let's make, let's make an envelope to match. Now I learned this from my friend Gina Kay many moons ago. You put your envelope, and this is a USA 2, into your trimmer, cut off half an inch, flip it back in the trimmer, slide it back over another half inch and cut. Then you're gonna open it up and remove the little hangy doohickey things. I, I don't really know what they're called, the hangy doohickeys. Sometimes they just fall off. Sometimes you gotta give it, you know, a little, little extra tug. Gotta, gotta tear it a little, but it's okay because we're gonna rebuild this we're gonna rebuild it. It's gonna be better than it was before, like the $6 million man. Did I just date myself? I think I did. You need some sticky double-sided tape in 1 8 inch, and this is the tape from Gina K Designs. I'm gonna put a little strip on one side, snip. I'm gonna add a strip to the other side, and this is the panel where we just tore off the little doohickeys. Then take the release paper off, fold it up. Oh, and you have just created the basis for a square envelope. You can get fancy here, take a corner rounder and round the corners on the flap. You don't have to do this, but it's a nice touch. And then you have this lovely little square card. And look at that. It's like it was made to fit because, well, I, it literally just was. But I do like to tape the sides with washi and you will need extra postage. So I always put an extra ounce stamp from the post office just to make sure it gets where it's supposed to go. For the final card, I'm using a rainbow of patterns. Now, a pad like this that comes with the same tiny little pattern just in multiple colors is a perfect thing for people who are a little nervous, right, about using the pattern paper to try. Here, I just worked in rainbow order. Same idea, same white outlines and shadow layer. I used an embossing folder to create a panel for the background. But you can see this tiny little pattern working in rainbow order fills in and is a really nice, effective way to create something that has a beautiful color harmony and pattern harmony as well. So these are very simple, but I tend to hew towards simple when using pattern paper. So if you've got those pads, pick out a single pattern, use that on a card, fill in a die cut, um, use the outline as well. It's a really easy way to add color via pattern paper to your card projects or try mixing multiples from a single collection and see how it turns out. I really like how these turned out. I love that they're just cardstock and pre-printed sentiments. No fuss, well, a little fuss, but no muss. Is that, is that what we say? I think we do. 
Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.